So guys, because of this course, I won't be actually doing any design. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open um, a design that I've already done and then I'll take you through guys the process of how to arrange and get this your file or design ready for printing. So let's open this design that I did last week and now we have it. So let me say you want to print this out for a large format printing or let me say this in a layman's language or in a term we actually do in Nigeria here is printing your works for flex banners or for high quality posters. So this is what you want to go with. So now we have this design. And first of all, what you need to understand are the two types of image files in design. There are actually two types of image files in design. There is a vector image file and there is a raster image file. What is a raster image file? Raster image files are made up of pixels. And what's in about pixels is that there is a limit to how much it can be drawn. So whenever you have a raster image file, one of the things to have in mind is that there is a limit to how you can increase this image file. For example, now let me say we have an image opened in Photoshop. And then you notice that if I zoom into this image, there is a point whereby I'll stop seeing my design and all I'll be seeing are these little boxes here. So these boxes are called pixels and these pixels carry the information of the colors that are actually in the image or in the design. So these little boxes carry the information of the colors and this is what is sent to your printer for a printer to actually know the color to use when printing your design. So now, one of the limitations of raster image is that these pixels go through a process called pixelization whenever it is drawn to a certain limit. So, pixelization is actually the overstretching of these pixels. As you notice, the more we zoom into this image, I don't think Photoshop will actually let us zoom in, but you notice that the more we zoom into this image, the more the image becomes a little bit of blurry or you notice that the image starts getting blurry as we can see right here. So as you can see that the more we zoom in, the more the image gets blurred. So this is the major limitation of raster images. That's why raster images are likely used for photography or used for displays that might not be printed or that will not be printed. And actually one of the most major raster design image softwares are Photoshop. These raster images have their own disadvantages for when it comes to a vector image vector images are composed of mathematical calculations and are being made up of points so one of the greatest advantage of a vector image over a raster image is the fact that it can be increased indefinitely so no matter how much you increase it because of it's made up of calculation and points, you notice that no matter how much you increase it, it doesn't lose its quality. So most times when you see this theme type of images, you notice that no matter how much you overstretch them, it doesn't seem to change quality. So that's the major advantage we have over a raster image software. So actually, the raster images, we have different types or different extensions of raster images like the JPG, like the PNG and all that. But for vector images, we have the PDF, we have the EPS and a lot of that. So the major vector softwares we have or vector image based softwares we have are Corel Draw or, or InDesign. Because one thing I love about the Adobe community is that it broke down different of its softwares into their functionalities. So we have Illustrator, we have um, Photoshop, which is primarily a raster-based software, and we have Adobe InDesign, which is a vector-based software. That's why Adobe InDesign is majorly used for banners and also for magazines and brochures. So now, another terminal that we need to learn in printing is what we call DPI. DPI means dots per inch so what are dots per inch dots per inch are actually the 
the number of droplets that your that your printer will release in one inch of the paper that your design is going to be printed on. So the best way to explain this is that in your surface area or in your print paper, the number of ink droplets that your printer is going to be pouring on top of your print paper is actually determined by the DPI resolution. And this is actually much different from your PPI resolution, which has to do with pixels per inch. Like I explained to you, these tiny dots in raster images are called pixels. So that actually means the number of pixels in your image. And Im at this time, are actually more conversant with photographers because we know that the higher the pixel, the higher your image quality will be. That's also... The higher your print medium, the higher the the factor you're going to be using to print your design, be it the flex, be it the poster, that's the more DPIs you need. So DPI means ink droplets per inch, while your PPI means the number of pixels you have in one inch. Let me head over to new file for you to just see some things we have here. So you notice that in Photoshop. Being a raster based image software, we have pixels per inch. So we have pixels per inch here or pixels per centimeter. So now this 72 resolution means that we have 72 pixels per inch. So that means in every one inch, we have 72 pixels there. But normally in printing, we actually use 300 resolution. 200 resolution. So this is um, 300 pixels per inch. So do we get that? So now, when you are actually trying to turn your Photoshop design, you are printing on the large format like a flex printer or a flex banner printer, you actually need to increase your resolution to 1000. So, you know, I explained that in DPI, the more DPI resolution you have, the more clear your images become. So now we know how big a flex banner comes out as. Most times they come out in feet. We have the four by three feet by 20 feet. So because of how big these print mediums are, you actually have to increase the number of resolutions to actually make your work clearer. In PPI, the pixels per inch determines how clear your images will come out in display. Why in printing, your DPI ensures how clear your printing will come out in your print medium. So when I say print medium, I mean either your poster, your brochure, your magazine, or your flex banners. So now, another thing to consider when converting your design to a printable format is that you have to make sure that your color mode is actually set to CNYK. That's because of many printers don't read color codes in RGB. Like we learned in secondary school, RGB is a primary color, while your CMYK is your secondary color. So most flex machines print your flex or your materials in CMYK color mode. So what you need to keep in mind is that you need to change your color mode to CMYK. So now, let's see what we have here and let's start applying this in a real setting okay so now we have um this design here um designed for luminosity barium and we have a scaling greater height let's just assume that this is um six by three we're going to be printing this on a six by three flex banner so what i want to do firstly is i want to head over to image And I want to head over to image size. And as you can see, we have our resolution set on 300. So, but to actually make this clear enough for printing, we have to change this to 1000. So depending on your configuration or depending on your system, this might actually take time, but it's a little price you take to actually export your designs. This might actually take time to load because what you are doing is to increase this image 
more than Photoshop's capacity. So, what you are going to do is that in some configurations, if your system has a lower CPU or a lower CPU speed, it might actually take some hours, or for some people, it will take minutes, or for some people, so it takes seconds. So now we have um, 1000 resolution. And earlier versions, like newer versions of Photoshop, has a, an effect that helps reduce the pixelation on this your design. For example, now we have um, reserve details, enlargement, reserve details 2.0 by cubic smoother and by cubic sharper. All these stuffs are just for increasing the quality whenever you are increasing the resolution of your design. So for Photoshop, we always make use of reserve details 2.0. And pay attention to this right here. Let me see if I can increase it. So pay attention to this. If I reduce this, the pictures become more pixelated. But if I increase this, makes that the pixelations disappear. So notice that to an extent, all my tests and my images are clearer. So even if I take it to the image, notice that my images are clearer and at the higher quality. So now what I want to do is I want to hit OK. So depending on your configuration, this might actually take some time. This might actually take some time. But actually for my own, it took... um. But I'm just going to fast forward this so that we can get to the rest of the video. As you can see, mine is finally done. So now what you want to do is you want to reduce this. And then the second thing you want to do is that you want to change this your color mode to CMYK. Like I said, your printer will only read your color output in CMYK. So you need to convert this your color to CMYK color. So to that, we'll head over to image mode. I will be using a CMYK color mode. So Photoshop will normally ask you, will actually give you this um, error message. Changing modes can affect the appearance of layers, flatten image before mode change. So it's actually advisable to flatten your images. Why is this important? If you have different layers in your design, most times when you don't flatten your image, the color mood might not appear the same way in different layers. So the best way to ensure uniformity in all your layers is actually to flatten your image. So now we head over to flatten. You're about to use a convert to CMYK. Okay, 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 okay. So this is what it does. So why do we convert our images to CMYK? This is actually important if you want to get color accuracy when you are printing your designs. Because most times we have issues whereby when you print your design, you notice that it's different from what it's looking like when you designed it. The, the colors either appear blurry or the colors appear less sharper. So now, you want to avoid that. So to do that, to color match your design with the color output of the printer, you have to convert your design to a CMYK. So now you've done that, you click OK, and then, and you can see as we zoom in, there is little pixelization on this image. So now, what you want to do is that you want to save this as a vector file, not a raster file again. Like I said, um, if you head over to save us, you notice that this gives you some file extensions to save your design as. So, so we have the JPG. The JPG is actually a raster extension. It's actually a raster format. So what you want to do is you want to either use EPS or use the most basic that everybody knows about. I think printers actually know about TIFF and printers know about PDF. That's the two major ones I've seen. I've seen PDF, I've seen TIFF. So I don't know of all these um, 
all these um I, I i know of eps too but I, I, i've not actually seen a printer that asked me of eps before so it's majorly pdf or tif so now let's head over to pdf and if we go to um save a copy you will notice that um if go to save sorry we'll notice that it will take us to this uh, box here where you can see that it's asking us our P adobe pdf preset so there are different pre presets you have a pdf x minus i a whatever whatever and you have a smallest file size and press quality so what we actually want to use is high quality print high quality print i want to uncheck this button here we have photoshop editing capabilities this is actually useless because we don't want this design to be edited we just want it to be printed so we uncheck this and we uncheck this optimize for fast web preview this because of is not going to be viewed in web this is just for printing and all that so we, we uncheck this button and now we are ready to save so you can also set your compression so we have the compression jpeg and then we have um your image quality you have to increase your image quality to maximum for it to actually come out sharper and then we have output this one so you don't need anything in this one and all that so what you want to do is you head over to save pdf and then when you have your design saved as pdf you can now actually send it to your print that to print and you notice that when your print comes out it comes out in high quality and very very color accurate so guys thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed the tutorial just subscribe to our channel that would be good as a support for our channel and do well to like the video and also share the video to your friends who haven't discovered this so without further ado guys thanks for watching mess graphics out